morning and happy Tuesday to you. I hope you're having a great morning so far. Uh, this morning, as we turn to God's Word to help us grow as disciples, I want you to join me in Matthew chapter 12. Uh, we're going to be reading verses 43 through 45 uh, today and see what the Lord would say to us in this passage of Scripture. Uh, this is Jesus giving a parable or illustration. Obviously, Jesus taught a lot in parables. Uh, he, uh, you know, parables are simply, uh, a, a, you know, one definition I've always heard about the word parable, it's a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Uh, it's simply an illustration. Jesus used uh, this as a teaching method that uh, obviously he would connect deep theological truth to everyday occurrences that the people would be very familiar with, helping them to understand exactly what God uh, was doing and saying in his word. Uh, so here we have Jesus talking about an unclean spirit. And I want you to really listen to this because I think it contains in it a real powerful truth about growing as a disciple. Uh, beginning at verse 43. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and placed and put in order. Then he goes out and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be also with this wicked generation. Uh, you know, here, first and foremost, I want to say this in verse 43. Uh, obviously, Jesus acknowledges with this story the, the presence of evil spirits. We've seen him dealing with evil spirits already in the Gospel of Matthew, casting them out. So uh, I want to quickly mention the fact that Friends, we must understand that there is more going on around us that we can't see that's going on around us that we can see. Uh, the, the spiritual realm is real. Uh, we cannot acknowledge uh, the Holy Spirit and, and angels and not acknowledge the fact the Bible speaks a lot about evil spirits. There are evil spirits on the earth, and they are here, and they do the bidding of their master, which is Satan. He, you know, he, he is uh, definitely the prince of demons, if you will. And uh, so the, the, the reality, there is spiritual warfare going around us at all times. Now, here we see in Jesus' story, an evil spirit has been cast out of a man. And notice that he said, Jesus made, gives commentary that as the evil spirit is cast out, he goes through dry places seeking rest and he finds none. I can't help but remember, uh, you know, when Jesus comes ashore and he is approached by the man who had the, the, the legion of demons and he cast them out. And those demons, you know, had asked Jesus for permission to go into a herd of swine. Uh, it's, you know, obviously the evil spirits don't want to be, quote unquote, disembodied. And so here we see this, this demon that Jesus cast out. He can't find a body. He can't find a place. Uh, he says, the demon says to himself, I will return to my house, indicating the person that he was in uh, from which I came. And when he comes, notice this. This is the key. He finds the, the person that he was in, the home, if you will, empty, swept and put in order. Now, this is a picture of the man having encountered, uh, you know, the, the, the deliverance uh, he had swept his life clean and he had put things in order, but he was empty. Now that's huge. He was empty. Verse 45, then the spirit goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. He has a demon party and he goes in into that man again and dwells. And notice this, the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be with this wicked generation. Now, what does Jesus mean by this? Well, I think it's pretty clear. You know, it's not enough uh, to be, uh, you know, for the evil, evil spirits to be cast out. It's not enough for us to be, to say no to the things of this world or the system of the world or demonic influences that would approach our lives. Uh, it's not enough just to say no. We have to say yes to Jesus. You see, God doesn't want our lives to be empty. He wants to fill our lives with his very presence. He wants our lives to reflect his glory and his power. Uh, the problem that we have in our culture today is a lot of people are empty. So we are easy targets for demonic forces to come and afflict us. You know, we, we, uh, you know I was reading something yesterday for an assignment for my, uh, my doctoral program. 
And uh, the author was relating some statistics uh, that less than 20 percent or I think the exact figure was, excuse me, 28 percent of people who uh, identify as born again Christians read the word of God on a daily basis. That's less than a third of Christians. That is three in 10, less than three in 10 born again Christians read the word of God on a daily basis. In fact, most people, according to the survey the author cited, uh, spend no time in God's word. Uh, zero, nothing. So the only word that they might get is if they show up to church on Sunday and hear the pastor preach or hear the pastor read scripture. Uh, you know, and that's great. Go to church. Absolutely. Listen to sermons. That, that's important. That's important that we, we are encouraged by sermons and the word of God. But friends, we don't need to depend on others. We should be self-feeding. We should be in the word of God. That's how we fill the house. We fill the house with God's word, and, and then the Spirit of God acts on the word of God to produce in us the character of God. You know, if we leave the house empty, we are vulnerable. And I'm afraid that's the problem with a lot of Christians today and a lot of churches. We're empty. And because we're empty, we're, we're, we're being assaulted from left and right by the enemy and and we're not being effective. We're being filled. And notice, it, it's not just going to be as bad as it was. Seven demons that were more wicked than the original one took residence in that man's life. And the picture there is, this guy was worse off. You know, the fact is, friends, if you've heard the gospel, and if you responded and said, yes, I want to follow Jesus, you're now vulnerable. Because you see, the house has been cleaned by the blood of Jesus Christ. But if you're not filling your house, you're opening yourself up to all sorts of influences that will pull you away. And the, and the, the state of your house, your state of your life is going to be worse than it was before because now you're accountable. You know, you're in a worse position than you were because you heard the word of God. Friends, let's make sure we're filling the house. You know, obviously, that's one of the reasons we do this every morning uh, is because we, we want to hear the Word of God and we want to not just to be hearers of the Word, we want to be doers. So today, make a habit of listening to the Word of God and reading the Word of God every day. The, 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 the uh, resource I was reading last night encouraged people to memorize Scripture. You know, that's something I used to do when I was a child. You remember the old Bible drills, those of you who hung around church when you were a kid, uh, the Bible drills? Uh, you know, they've fallen out of favor today for some reason, and we don't do a lot of that. And I know our Awana program uh, at Cornerstone, we do Bible memorization with our kids, and, you know, uh, that's a big hallmark of the Awana program, and I think that's really important. And, you know, it's not just important for kids. You know, the Bible says in, in Psalm 119, I hid his word in my heart that I might not sin against God. That's a picture of memorizing God's word. I encourage you, start spending time memorizing the word of God. Let it get into your heart. Fill your life with God's word so that you will have an able defense against the enemy's assaults. You know, the word of God in Ephesians is referred to by Paul as the sword of the spirit, the sword. So make sure you've got a sharp sword in your life to fight off the forces that are going to try to pull you away from Christ. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you so much for your word. I pray, God, that today you would help us to fill our lives with your presence, that we would take your word, we would read it, we would memorize it, we would meditate on it, we would let it become the, the foundation, Lord, of our growth in Christ. Lord, I pray that we would embrace the work of the Holy Spirit in us who takes the written word and opens it to us and brings to our remembrance whatsoever you commanded us, Lord Jesus. I pray that we would just allow him to, 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 to take that word and form your character in us, God, so that we are, are having a ready defense against the assaults that the enemy would bring against us to try to pull us away and make our house much worse than it was prior to knowing you. I thank you, God, for this time in your word today, and I pray that you would let it dwell richly in our hearts, and I pray, God, that all of us would stand on your truth today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day today. Remember, stay in the word. God bless you.